Hi everyone, my name is Kenzie Akins. I have my bachelor's in kinesiology with an emphasis on rehabilitation science. I'm a certified personal trainer, certified corrective exercise specialist, and I am also a katsu specialist. The previous video in our series, we did beginner exercises for those who are just starting off using katsu, recovering from injury, or if you are living a more sedentary lifestyle. Make sure that you go through that first before beginning these exercises that we are gonna show today. But for those of you who are maybe more experienced with katsu, weekend warriors, or athletes, this video is gonna be for you. Before starting this workout, just as we showed in our previous video, I highly recommend starting off on doing at least one cycle on either arms or legs, depending on which area of your body that you are going to be training that day and starting off with those three point exercises. That is going to really help ensure that your body is going to be primed and ready for the work that you are going to do. Additionally, as far as periodization or how many times a week you could be doing this, if you are someone who is very experienced in your own fitness or with katsu, I would recommend doing upper body one day, lower body the next, and then following it with a rest day or even a passive day using your katsu bands to help with that recovery process. If you are not sure, then I would recommend doing upper body one day, waiting a day, and then lower body. If you feel like your body is starting to progress really well, then by all means, continue to increase that intensity as well as that frequency of how many times a week you are doing the exercises. I would also recommend staying well hydrated and if something feels off, whether you're doing upper or lower body exercises, please feel free to stop the cycle, take the bands off, wait maybe a day or two and then go back into it and making sure that you are really prioritizing your hydration, nutrition and sleep on the days that you are working out. Let's get started. Today, I'm gonna to be using our B2 model, which is tubeless. However, any of these exercises that we are gonna be doing today, you can use with any of our Katsu devices as well. As a reminder, always start off on low pressure and cycle mode. As you begin to progress with these exercises and throughout the weeks, you can begin to increase that intensity as needed or as you see fit for yourself. Another reminder, you can also begin your exercises while the bands are inflating. You do not have to wait for them to be inflated. You are still gonna get great results. Our first exercise that we are going to do today, we are going to do push-ups. We're gonna start on the ground in a plank position. One thing that is really important when doing push-ups and especially when we are using katsu is to think about our time under tension and our mind-muscle connection. Don't just go through the motion, but be intentional with your movements. One more key thing when doing push-ups is making sure that we are being mindful of the angle of our elbow in relation to our shoulder. I always like to advise people to keep it at either a 45 degree angle or lower. So if we are down on the ground and you notice that your elbow begins to flare up above the shoulder, it can cause some rotator cuff injuries or pain in the shoulder. So we wanna to try to keep those elbows right at that 45 degree angle. We're gonna start out here, palms placed underneath the shoulders, and we're just gonna slowly lower ourselves down and then push up, keeping our core and quads and glutes engaged, going through that movement, keeping that nice solid plank form. And with these, ideally, just like in our previous video, you want to be doing three sets of 10. If you cannot do three sets of 10, just do as many as you can until we work up to that three sets of 10. I'm also gonna show you guys a quick modification too that can help, especially if you do not feel like that your core is strong enough to support your lower body in this. We're just gonna do it on our knees. So it's gonna be the same setup, hands beneath the shoulders, but as you can see, I'm gonna be on my knees and then slowly lowering myself down and coming right back up. Next, we are going to do some bicep curls. These are gonna be maybe a little bit different than anything that you guys have seen in the past. We are going to combine a standard bicep curl with a hammer curl. So what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start with, again, my weights or water bottles, whatever you have on hand. I'm gonna start with a hammer curl. This is gonna focus more on our brachioradialis, meaning it's gonna include the forearm a little bit more than just the bicep. 
I'm gonna start by curling up and then I'm gonna rotate as much as I can, really getting that bicep engaged and slowly lowering it back down. And then gonna curl up in that bicep position and then we're gonna rotate again at the top. So on this one, we are only rotating at the top of our reps. So I'm gonna come up, I'm back to that original hammer, going to bicep, back down. We're gonna bicep curl again, rotate, slowly lowering it down. This is a really great way to get a full inclusive arm workout on that brachioradialis and the bicep muscle as well. The next exercise that we are gonna do, we are gonna use these water bottles for weight. We're gonna do a lateral raise, which helps to target the lateral head of our deltoid. We're gonna have a slight bend in our elbows, and I'm almost gonna think about pushing the water away, and then almost trying to dump that water out. That will help us to really engage those lateral delt heads, coming all the way up, and then lowering it back down. Same thing, guys, we're being very mindful, very intentional with our movements squeezing those shoulder muscles and then coming right back down and if this is maybe even a little bit too advanced for you you can just set those down we're going to imagine that we have those water bottles in our hand pushing out same thing dumping that water out to really help engage that lateral head of the deltoid The next exercise that we are going to do, we are going to use a chair and do a tricep dip. There are two ways that you can do this exercise. I'm gonna show you the more advanced version and then the modified version. So for this, I like to start sitting on the chair. Hands are gonna be placed right at the edge. I'm gonna walk my feet out so my legs are fully extended. Same thing with, as with the push-ups. I'm gonna slowly lower myself down and then push up Visualizing and imagining that we're just squeezing the back of our arm to get us to go up. If we need to modify it, we're gonna bend our knees right at a 90 degree angle so our legs can support more of our body weight. And then we are gonna go down and up. And same thing with the push-ups. Make sure that those elbows are not flaring out. That will also put more of an emphasis on the shoulder and take away from the tricep. Isn't necessarily going to cause injury. However, we do wanna make sure that we are really targeting that tricep muscle by keeping those elbows tucked in. And then three sets of 10 as well. Next, we are going to do a towel row. So for this one, we are gonna start standing. I'm gonna hold this kind of about shoulder width apart and I'm gonna think about pulling out. I'm going to raise my arms again, right at that 45 degree angle. And then as I am pulling out with my arms, I'm gonna be pulling my back and my elbows backwards. Oftentimes you can think about either one, pinching a pencil between your shoulder blades, or you can even think about trying to juice or squeeze a lemon in your armpit, and that will actually engage the lats a little bit more. Next, we are going to show you guys a plank. I'm going to show you guys two variations with this as well. One is gonna be a forearm plank. The other is going to be what's called a upright plank. It is important to note that the elbow plank is going to create more of an emphasis on the core, but if we do an upright plank, it will put more of an emphasis on the shoulders. So we're gonna get in almost a similar position as we did with the push-ups. I'm gonna show you guys the upright plank first. I'm gonna make sure that my hands are stacked nice and neat underneath my shoulders and then kick my feet out. I'm gonna engage that core, engage my quads and my glutes to keep my body up. Then if we want to make it a little bit more challenging for our core, we're gonna do the same thing, but I'm gonna be on my elbows. Again, elbows are gonna be right underneath those shoulders, engaging that core, keeping that body upright. And for this one, Instead of doing three sets of 10, I would recommend three sets of 30 seconds to a minute if you can. Again, if you can't get to 30 seconds or a minute, just do what you can and then focus on working up to those time limits. Now we're gonna get into the advanced lower body exercises. We are going to do a forward walking lunge. This exercise does have two modifications that you can use as well. 
The first one that I'm gonna demonstrate is going to be more quad focused. The second one is going to be more glute and hip focused. So we're gonna start right about here. I'm going to step forward if I want it, if I want this exercise to focus more on my quad, I'm gonna think about pushing my knee over my toes, going down as far as I can control it, coming back up, tapping down for balance, stepping with the next leg, pushing that knee over the toe, and then digging that heel in. If I want to focus more on the glutes, I'm going to again, focus on my knee and my ankle. So I'm gonna take a step forward. Instead of pushing that knee over though, I wanna keep that knee stacked on top of my ankle and hinge at the hips more, and then digging into my heel to push up. Coming down here, squeezing that glute to bring myself back up. And for this one, we are again gonna do three sets of 10, but it will be five on each leg. So next exercise, we are going to do an RDL, otherwise known as a Romanian deadlift. Fun fact, if an exercise starts with a European country, it's gonna be brutal. So for this, we are going to start off with no weight at all. We're gonna have our feet right about hip width apart. And I want you to almost imagine if someone puts a rubber band around your hips, we are going to, and then pushing or pulling your hips back. We're gonna keep our core engaged, keeping our spine neutral, but we're going to push our hips back until we feel a nice stretch in the hamstring or the glutes. And then again, we are squeezing those glutes to bring us back to that full standing position. Your arms for this can just be right down at your sides, almost right at a diagonal on your quads. And then I'm just moving my hands down so I feel that good stretch and I'm coming right back up. And then if we want to make it a little bit more challenging, we're gonna grab our water bottles again or our weights. Same thing, I'm gonna place them right on that outer portion of my quad and I just want to roll them down my legs and then coming right back up. This is a really great exercise also to strengthen our low lumbar. So if you are someone who does tend to have back tension or feels like they do have weakness in their back, this is a great exercise to strengthen that. Another important key for this exercise is to make sure that we are keeping our shoulders back. You can almost use the same cue as we did for the towel row of thinking about pinching a pencil between those shoulder blades. That's gonna help keep our chest up and even help to keep our core engaged and back neutral. Shoulders back and we're going down, feeling that good stretch squeezing those glutes to come back up. And we are going to do again, you guessed it, three sets of 10. This next exercise, this is actually Dr. Sato's favorite squat variation. We are going to do quarter squats. For the setup in this, everyone is going to be a little bit different. So if you do have a little bit of more tension in your hips, feel free to take a wider stance with it. But we're gonna come here, you can have praying hands or just have them down by your sides. We are going to squat down just above 90 and then coming right back up to about 45 degrees, not locking out those knees. We want to keep as much tension on our quad muscles as we can during this exercise. And then from a side view, again, if you have tight hips, we're gonna take a wider stance. We're going to squat down just until about 90, coming right back up not locking out those legs. And again, we are gonna do three sets of 10 or as many as you can do. Our next exercise, we are going to tackle our calves. So for this, there are a few different modifications that you can do to make it either easier or more challenging. We have our chair here, so if you are someone who does tend to struggle with balance, I highly recommend using this for stability in order to help you really get that mind-muscle connection. We're gonna start here. First variation is just doing both legs at the same time. I'm gonna put my hands on this bar just for a little bit more stability. Coming up, really going up on my tiptoes, squeezing those calf muscles, and then coming back down. We're gonna do three sets of 10 for this as well. If I want to make it more challenging, I'm gonna just pick up one leg and go on one foot all the way up and all the way down. 
And then if we do do single leg, I do recommend doing three sets of 10 on each leg as well, just to make sure that we are really giving those calves a good workout. If you are someone who really wants to challenge yourself, you can balance on one leg, come up, and then slowly go down as well. This is also a really great exercise one to engage the core and help with balance, but also strengthen your ankles as well as your feet. We are going to do asymmetrical balance. This one is really great, especially for people who have maybe gone through an ankle injury, knee or hip injury, or are on that recovery aspect. We're gonna start, same thing, balancing just on one leg. You're gonna have your arms out to the side, we can move them around in different ways to really challenge that balance. And if you want to make it even more difficult, we are going to take a weight or a water bottle on the opposite side of the leg that is balancing. This is gonna be really good also for engaging that core and working on strengthening that core, as well as our posture. And the same thing, you can hold the water bottle wherever feels like we're getting a good challenge, but also we are not overstraining ourselves. And for this one, we are going to do three sets of 20 to 30 seconds. If you don't feel like you can get that 20 initially, that's fine. Start off just going as much as you can do and then slowly progressing on that time, similar to the plank. So we're just gonna sit down on our mat and we're going to do a single leg glute bridge. If doing it single leg is maybe a little bit too challenging, I would recommend starting off with both legs until you can work up that comfortability of doing a single leg. It is very similar to a double leg bridge. We are just gonna lay here. I'm going to extend one leg and then I'm going to think about squeezing my glute, digging my heel into the ground and then slowly lowering back down. Breathing through it nice and easy. And again, really being mindful of squeezing that glute, squeezing the hamstring, and then lowering back down. And then for these, we're gonna do three sets of 10 on each leg to make sure that we are really training our body from a holistic approach. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you guys have questions, comments, concerns, please feel free to drop them below in the comment section. Or if you felt like there was an exercise or muscle group that we did not show today, that you would like to see in a future video, also drop that in the comments below.